Hi, I'm Nate Adams, and this is the free HVAC basics guide from my book, which you can download below. So here's a big chunk of why I wrote this. I've been to a lot of client homes, and I get there, and I hear the story about how one cold day in winter or hot day in summer, their furnace or their air conditioner died. So they bought one from the first guy who showed up, and they basically bought whatever he suggested. The problem is... I am there because they still have comfort issues and very often there's no way to truly solve these unless we change the HVAC system. That stands for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Uh, so in this picture, every one of these represents upwards of $5,000 wasted. All of these furnaces were well before the end of life and all of them got ripped out and replaced. So I want to help you avoid that painful mistake. Now, the beautiful thing is you already own a state-of-the-art HVAC system, and you know how it works really well. So even older cars, this is my wife's first car. It was a 1992 Corolla that we bought for 500 bucks, uh, and it had a better HVAC system than 98% of American homes, which is really just crazy. Uh, so let's walk through how and why that works. So here's the deal. See this? temperature dial, you can go from a lot of cool to a little bit of cool to a little bit of warm to a lot of bit of warm. Uh, and you can dial in just what you want so you can match what the car needs at any given moment. You can also change the fan speeds and you'll probably notice that low fan is quiet and high fan is loud enough you probably have to talk over it. The car also gives you the ability to change where the airflow is going to. So in the summertime, I like face only. I want the cold air to hit me in the face. But in the wintertime, I want it at my feet or sometimes feet and defrost so that I can clear the windshield if it's foggy uh, in the morning. Now, two other things they do, there's that air conditioning button. So yes, you think of this as uh, turning on the air conditioning, but you can run the AC with the heat on and what it does is dehumidify. So you can dry out the inside of the car or when it comes to homes, keeping a home dehumidified, the more I learn, the more important I realize it is. But in your car, when you turn the defroster on, that actually turns the air conditioner on, and that dries the air going across your windshield, which means it will clear the fog off. And then the last thing is there's the choice to either bring in fresh air or not. Now, bringing in fresh air is a wonderful thing to do, but your house just can't do that unless you have a special system. So the end of the story there is little whitey, which is what we called her, scoffs in your general direction. Because little whitey has all of these different knobs where you can control things up or down. Meanwhile, most HVAC systems in homes are called single stage or single speed. They're either on or they're off. There's no in the middle. And it's really critical if you want to have comfort to get a right size piece of equipment that has multiple speeds. And actually, that brings us to the six things that HVAC should have. So the first thing, which is most important, and I never see anybody talk about this, is load matching. You want to put just the right amount of heat or cool into the house for what it needs at that specific moment. That changes from moment to moment to moment, so the more speeds you have, the more stages you have, the better. The second thing is filtration. So again, the more that we're learning, the more important we realize that cleaning the air is important. So if you run air through a good filter all the time, which is not that expensive actually, you can drastically improve the health of your home and the indoor air quality. The third thing you want to look for is dehumidification capability. Now, if you live out west and you have a dry climate, you don't have to worry about this as much. But here in the Midwest, and generally the East Coast in general, we have humidity we need to deal with much of the year. And if you let things get too moist, too humid, you can get dust mites. Asthma for kids can get worse. You get mold. It's uncomfortable. Uh, it can cause rots. There's all kinds of things that can happen. So you want to be sure that you can dehumidify whenever you want, like that AC button. The fourth thing is you want to be able to bring in fresh air, and there's everything from simple ways that cost a couple hundred bucks to more expensive ways that are thousands of dollars. Uh, but you want to be able to bring in fresh air to the house when needed. 
The fifth thing is you want to be able to direct the heater cool where you want it. And your house actually has some capability for this now, but it's really limited and it will stay limited until you buy the right piece of HVAC equipment. The sixth thing is humidification. So in the wintertime, houses get dry and it's nice to be able to add some humidity to the air. Now this isn't right for everybody. If you have asthma or you have mold allergies, it's probably not a good idea. But if you have all six of these capabilities here, the odds are you can make your house far more comfortable than it is today. So that gives you a little bit of a glimpse into what is in the HVAC basics chapter. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Leave me a comment. I'm curious what you think about all of this. And uh, subscribe. Uh, so I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. I'm Nate Adams.